Hello! You have joined the script mistress for scene 13, writing an epic character arc. I am your host, Amber Bosworth, and I am so excited to bring you this episode. I know I kind of say that a lot. I get really excited about doing these episodes. Now I want to ensure you I want to ensure that you are confident when creating dynamic and epic characters because I know a lot of my writers that write for my my challenges know how how important character arcs and characters are to me um, as I'm I'm going through all of your scripts and I, I really try to push this. So I, I'm hoping this is a very good episode for you that you get keep it and listen to it often as long as I don't ramble on too much. <laughs> now, if you want to stay up to date on podcast events and my challenges, get on my mailing list at www.thescriptmistress.com. And I also have this whole episode on video at www.thescriptmistress.com forward slash scene 13, one, three, uh, totally for your enjoyment along with the free download that I will mention at the end of the episode. Totally free, no strings attached. Just got to give me your email list or your email. And just a reminder, I do read a lot of blogs. Uh, I read a lot of online articles. Uh, I have a master's degree in uh, creative writing for uh, screenplays. So I pull a lot of this. So I, I try to find some things and and pull everything together and create these podcasts for you. So I put all of my resources where I get a lot of this information. I do put it in. It'll be in the show notes if you go to that slash uh, scene 13 or in the podcast um, show notes. It should be right in there for you if you want to look at that. Now, I also want to remind you that this is not edited. <laughs> I just get on here and spill on the weekly topic. Collecting this from the plethora of information gives me great motivation to write. Like me doing this helps me help you. It's about what works for you as a writer to keep the keys clacking or the pen scratching. Now, we just wrapped up the December Ink to Screen Screenwriting Challenge. Now, if you are just finding my podcast for the first time, I run Run a monthly short screenwriting challenge where writers that sign up get five days to write a new, brand new five page screenplay based on a prompt sent out on that first day of the challenge. The winner gets $150, and every writer that submits a completed script gets detailed feedback right on their script and in a coverage sent out to them after. Um, once the, the winner is announced. This is all included in the $15 entry fee, just $15. I do it every month. You can check it all out at www.thescriptmistress.com forward slash ink to screen. Now the January challenge coming up will one, run from January 18th to the 22nd and registration will open up on Monday. Um, so that will be coming up if you're listening to this on Friday. Now, don't miss out on writing a new short script every month in 2023, because I do have a special that if you buy the whole year, you get two months for free. You could totally do that and set up 2023 to write a new script every month. Amazing. Okay, now I have been rambling on, so let's get to the episode. Now, this is kind of a supplement to the episode we had about a couple weeks ago. I got a little sick and I had an interview. So back to scene 11, where I went over the 12 character archetypes. And in case you missed that episode, here they are again. So the 12, the warrior, the child, the orphan, the creator, the caregiver, the mentor, the joker, the magician, the ruler, the rebel, the lover, the seducer. Now, I would suggest going back and listening to all of those because they all come with special strengths and weaknesses that could really help you wrap it into this episode. Um, you can check that out at uh, www.thescriptmistress.com forward slash scene 11 if you want to get more of an in-depth feel for those character archetypes. Now, a crucial part of any screenplay is the main character's growth and evolution from beginning to end. This is their character arc. Not to be um, confused with the overall arc of the actual uh, screenplay, but this is just focusing on our, our character, which will give a lot of, of growth. So how do they grow? How do they change? What journey do they go on? Their character arc should speak to these questions. Whether the term leaves you scratching your head or fills you with trepidation about how to properly build it up, I am here to help guide you. Hopefully this helps. So let's start like, what is a character arc? <laughs> 
In simplified terms, a character arc is the transformation or growth that a character has over the entirety of a screenplay. Now, traditionally, the character that has the most significant character arc is the main character, aka the protagonist. So we'll kind of just kind of focus on them. But it, this goes for, for anybody if you want to instill these in your other supplemental characters as well. Now, their growth or internal journey is typically displayed as rather substantial, moving from one extreme to the other. For example, many protagonists fall into the unlikely hero trope and as such typically progress from clueless, cowardly, passive, etc. to strong, courageous, and well, heroic. Now, of course, this growth and change doesn't occur in a vacuum. One of the major driving elements in a character arc is a whole host of opposing external forces that appear almost impossible to overcome. Now, the character arc is pushed forward by this as the protagonist is essentially forced to evolve or face defeat. They must achieve this change by acquiring, for example, certain skills, self-awareness, allies, or conviction. So what makes a standout character arc? There's a marked difference between creating a good character arc and an absolutely standout character arc. Anyone who watches great films and TV will know this. What makes for a brilliant, captivating, and memorable character arc? Well, uh, I have some tips here. (laughs) Uh, One, complex characterization. Avoid cliched, predictable character arcs by creating characters that have flaws, represent morally gray areas, and have both good and bad sides to all their character traits. Even characters' strengths have certain weaknesses attached. Exploring how that impacts the individual and their growth will make all the difference in their character arc. Contemporary TV, in particular, is filled with such characters, proving their appeal to audiences. These are characters who are appealing and disgusting all at once, and overall prove compelling to watch. I'm sure just mentioning that you have thought of a couple of characters right away. Now, number two, an equal inner and outer journey, equal inner and outer journeys. In the real world, growth and the struggle for it happens on both an internal and an external level. Focus on exploring both sides of your character's journey. This gives their growth more weight and resonance setbacks. Realism makes for better character arcs. There's little more unrealistic than a character arc that lacks ups and downs, just has a straight flat line, like literally just flatlining a character. Don't do that. (laughs) Growth and strength don't happen in a straight line. Explore this and show that even the hero of the story will have their bad days. We all have bad days. Now, this speaks far truer than a character who keeps winning against all odds, and it makes the end transformation all that more fulfilling. Now, here are some steps for a great character arc. Of course, there's no one set way to write a great character arc, but having a series of suggested templates certainly doesn't hurt, especially especially if you're just starting out. I know a lot of the writers that I talk to or that listen to this that we um, talk are are more beginning and looking for those resources. And I think this is a really good uh, resource for this, um, a nice template to get a good starting point. And you can, can change it and mold it to your writing type. Now, here's a step by step guide to help you guide your character along their journey. So step one, the starting point. <laughs> In order to see your character become someone new, we have to who we have to see who they used to be. In the beginning scenes of your screenplay, you'll need to explore where your character is starting off. So this is kind of just where it um, setting the scene, obviously. <laughs> what is their life situation? What are their values? Even more importantly, what is the thing missing from them or their life? After all, there is no story if everything in their lives is right, everything in their lives is right as rain, right? It's also crucial to explore what the mask is that they present to society. What is the face they show the world? How has it helped them cope with life? And how has it ultimately failed at bringing them happiness? 
Hmm. What are some of their major character flaws and how do they shape their behavior? If these questions seem difficult to answer, a great, <laughs> a great way to answer them is by working backwards. Odds are you probably have a good idea where you want your character to end up. Um, and I know I've mentioned this in other podcast episodes before, but I like my personal type is I like to go backwards and work my way back to see how they got to that. I'm like, I know where I want them to end up. How do I get them there? And what's the most dynamic way to get them there? Whether you want your character to learn sacrifice, develop empathy, become a courageous warrior, etc., these loose goals do a long way, go a long way to informing your character's personal journey. Because of the typically dramatic opposite nature of characters' beginnings and endings, you'll easily have a guide if you can figure out one of them. For example, want your hero to be forgiving? Maybe start them off as merciless and unsympathetic. Want your character be, to become an advocate for the weak? Um, perhaps show them to be the bully in the beginning. Very good arc there. Step two, the initial goal. Connected to your character's starting personality, values, and situation, you need to also establish what their starting goal is. Your story is about a character who sets off on a journey. They need an initial reason for that journey. What does your character want to achieve? What are their internal and external motivations? Are they trying to rescue their family or start a new life? Is their main goal to gain money, slay a dragon, or take down a suspect, a despot, <laughs> or a suspect, right? <laughs> or are they rather striving for security, inspiration, or hope? How do their external and their internal goals interact? Whatever your answer, it needs to be a goal that feels genuinely important to the character. Nobody embarks on life-changing journeys because of reasons that don't really matter to them. Make the goal feel important and make it feel real. Your character's goal doesn't have to stay the same for the duration of your screenplay. In fact, a good character arc needs to have motivations that change and morph over time. Just like the character themselves, their goals and reasons for their actions are constantly in flux. As their values and experiences change, what they're striving for will also change. Your character always needs an end goal to generate better story focus, inspire deeper emotions, and prove that a change has happened, even if that goal changes throughout your story. Very good. Very good step there. Step three, the big challenge. In order for major character development to happen, you need to create a challenge that will push your character in the correct direction. Yes, they have a goal spurring them on, but that won't be enough to keep them moving. You must put pressure on them. This big challenge can come from a few different sources, with two of the biggest ones being from an antagonist or from the character themselves, that internal conflict. A combination of these two will be the most effective because it's, once again, a pairing of internal and external conflict. Regardless, don't be afraid to give these challenges a serious weight or upper hand because the conflict needs to create high stakes that don't allow a character to quit. They can't quit. Put into practice, though, one of the biggest and most satisfying challenges for any character in their character arc is the struggle against a deeply held fear. Why? Because fear is the one thing that holds us all from getting exactly what we want. <laughs> I'm sure as writers, we can all relate to that <laughs> on a deep level. A fire-breathing dragon, a gunfight, a particularly bad talk with the IRS. They're all barriers. However, they have multiple practical solutions. Fear has one solution. Conquer it. The only way your character can move forward in their mission and in their character development will be to conquer their fears. Whether those fears be about themselves or others or their circumstances. Once they do this, they've already won, no matter the literal end outcome of the screenplay. 
Conquering fears will bring your character perspective, major internal growth, and the will to carry on regardless of potential consequences. Now, the final step. Step four, the point of no return. After, wait, not the final step. Step four. (laughs) After your character has acknowledged what their challenge truly is, you've got to get them to the point of no return. It's at this point where the figurative speed and experience that they picked up propels them forward. At the point of no return, your character needs to fully commit to a goal or plan, one that is likely far different from their original one. Now, why is the point of no return important for a great character arc? It creates a greater focus and a more cohesive arc in general. It shows that the character's transformation is truly taking shape and that the end result is something that's going to stick. Furthermore, it also obviously helps along the plot, which is inherently tied to the character's growth. There's a few different ways you could approach this point of no return, including allow characters to make irreversible choices. When you allow characters wiggle room to get out of a sticky situation, they can face stagnation. Whether the choices were good or bad, their lack of reversibility will always force change in character and plot to happen. This approach is also perfect for showcasing some of your character's darker, more flawed moments. These can demonstrate the contrast between who they were and who they are, or or who they want to be. Show the consequences of your character's actions. Similarly to the last approach, this can bring out the stark differences between the past and the present into the forefront. You can explore how the character's initial actions has impacted their current actions and self. It's also a perfect time to look and see what path their past could have taken them down. Finally, decide on further rising and falling plot points. Allowing for more ups and downs, this approach can cause major shifts in your character arc. These plot points could take the character closer to their goals or further away. Everything can be improved or destroyed at will, which keeps an arc tense and interesting. Like I said, wasn't the final step. So step five, the other side. What comes up must come down. Likewise, a character arc that has a starting point must also have an end point. A great character arc has to have a great conclusion. Here, you need to explore how exactly your character has transformed in front of the audience's eyes. Where have they ended up? Did they achieve what they set out to do? And how have their goals changed throughout their journey? Did they ultimately fill the piece of the puzzle that was missing from their life? Or did they uh, to come to terms that they never would? How was your hero's flaws and strengths changed? What changes do others notice in them? What mask do they present to society or do they even need to present a mask anymore? How does your character interpret their own journey? Did they grow into a better person or a worse one? How did they win and how did they lose? When considering how to approach your character's transformation, remember that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. They don't have to win everything or lose everything. They don't have to exclusively be a hero or a villain. Alternatively, they don't have to even change in a positive way. The fall of a character is a just as, if not more, interesting of a narrative than a redemption or hero arc. In the end, Finish connecting the dots and show off the transformation that has taken place, warts and all. So those are the five steps. (laughs) I have these all written down. Um, I have this nice transcript on the the page, not necessarily all in the show notes. It doesn't fit on the podcast show notes. So go to the the page, uh, the webpage for this episode, www.thescriptmistress.com forward slash scene 13. Now... Can't get through all this without mentioning some great character arcs in film and TV. Here are some examples of great character arcs within film and TV just to get you going if you need some inspiration. Now, I'm sure you kind of noticed the um, picture I have, Breaking Bad, (laughs) A a famously tumultuous character arc. Walter White goes from normal high school chemistry teacher to a criminal mastermind, which is one of my favorites. 
Succession. This HBO series is full of great character arcs across all its main characters. However, the troubled heir apparent to his father's media empire, Kendall Roy, makes for the most empathetic and compelling character arc. His addiction issues and thirst for power make him an unstable and fascinating presence. The Godfather. Michael Corleone goes from all-American hero wanting nothing to do with his family's crime enterprise to the leader of that very enterprise. The pull of family makes his journey empathetic. Game of Thrones. Many of our least favorite characters become, in the end, our favorite ones as the series progresses. (laughs) Perhaps no one represents this better than Theon Greyjoy, who goes from arrogant braggart to near-mute hero. This happens through a painful set of external circumstances that are ultimately a result of his initially repugnant persona. Boyhood, a very literal character arc, at least in physical terms, represented by the growth of the real actor filmed in real time. We see how the character's family upbringing shapes his character over the years. Such a great, such a great movie. Love that movie. So I got um, a lot of these resources from industrialscripts.com forward slash character arc. Again, I will have this in my show notes for you guys to go take a look at that resource. Uh, I just love finding those things. If you Google, you can find some great stuff. Now, the writing action. I love giving you guys a writing action. So the freebie, download the free character introduction template. I know this is kind of from the other one. It's it's very basic, but fill it in with one of those 12 archetypes that we had from scene 11 that you'd like to write about next. Then use all the tips from this week, all the steps to create a dynamic character arc for them to follow. Now, you don't necessarily have to like... I love characters, and I think sometimes when we build a character, a story presents itself without us even realizing it. So maybe this would be a very nice way to kind of start a new script that you didn't know or help you with one that you're having problems with. Maybe even try one you've never really worked on before, like trying the child or uh, the villain Uh, one of those archetypes, then feel free to share your character introduction or any tips or anything that you realize on the Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash ink to screen, or please email me at amber at the scriptmistress.com and I could give you extra tips and help. So really ready to start off 2023 with a new script in your belt? Consider signing up for the next Ink to Screen screenwriting challenge. Again, the winner gets $150 and every writer that submits a script gets an in-depth coverage and feedback right on their script. Get help where you really need it. Uh, Very low price. You can check it all out at www.thescriptmistress.com forward slash ink to screen, the number two. Thank you so much for listening and or watching, I truly value any feedback. If you have an idea for a podcast that might help, you can email me at amber at scriptmistress.com. Like and follow this show wherever you are listening. Subscribe. Do all the things. Talk soon. And until then, happy writing.